morning, everyone. We welcome you to the Rock Ridge Church on this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. For us, uh, every Sunday is a Thanksgiving, and every day is a Thanksgiving. We understand how blessed we are. Not so much even by what we have, what we possess, or what we even all together realize, but beyond what we understand are reasons for us to give thanks because our God is good. And he himself is our greatest blessing. Uh, just knowing that he is there with us, uh, that he is here with us today, and uh, gather us together to be with him in this time of worship. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We welcome those online who are worshiping with us today. We are happy to have you here in our and have with us and worshiping our Lord. There are several announcements that I need to bring to your attention. Uh, we will have a call meeting with the congregation in just a few moments. That's one of the announcements, so you can prepare you for that. It's coming in just a few moments. First of all, I want to remind you of two things. Uh, the session will have its regular monthly meeting uh, following our time of worship here this morning. So a reminder to, to those elders on our session uh, to uh, be uh, to stay ready. Conducting uh, business at that particular time. Uh, another reminder that the uh, loaves and fishes are going to be uh, received next Sunday and dedicated uh, during our time of worship. So please keep that in mind if you have a, a, a box or if you have collected some other way, uh, monies that you wish to contribute to this particular cause. Uh, bring that with you and, and we will dedicate that uh, in prayer and pray for God to multiply uh, these gifts uh, with others that will be coming from uh, different people to help with the needs of those that, uh, during this time of COVID-19. So be in prayer about that. Also next Sunday is fifth Sunday. So uh, it's the beginning of the Advent season. That's going to be something special and we're going to acknowledge that in worship. It is also uh, uh, the fifth Sunday. Uh, it is the Sunday in which we do communion and we will plan to have communion in our time of worship next Sunday morning. So please keep this in mind. And those of you online, you can prepare your own elements and have them there at hand and you can participate with us uh, when we uh, do this in our time of worship. Those are just uh, the announcements that I have before me. There may be others. Uh, Janky, anything? No. Uh, well, at this particular time, then, I'm going to ask Janky to read for us uh, the purpose for this called meeting with the congregation today. On November 1st, 2020, in a called meeting of the session of the Rocky Ridge Cumberland Presbyterian Church, three people were selected as nominees to serve on the session as the class of 2023. The names of those three people are Jean Monin, David Peters, and Debbie Sessman. Furthermore, the moderator of the session set November 22nd, 2020 at 1045 a.m. as the date and time for the called meeting of the session with the congregation for the purpose of nominating and electing three people to serve on the session as the class of 2023. And it is that date uh, and it is also that time that is at hand. So I would ask that you join me uh, in prayer uh, as we now call this meeting with the congregation to order. Father, I ask that you would bless us in this particular meeting in light of the business that we are about to conduct. Guide our, our minds and hearts accordingly. This is not something to be taken lightly, but this is something that should weigh heavily upon our hearts as we select those that we pray have already been selected by you. And we ask that you lay your hand upon them that you uh, enable them, Father, give them both the will and the ability to serve you as they will be coming on the session in January of 2021. And I'll help us now to consider those that are going to be uh, placed before us, uh, others that may be, and to proceed according to your business, for your glory and for the good of this congregation. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You've heard the call for this meeting, so at this particular time, I will now open the floor for uh, nominations to proceed. The names of Jean Monin, David Peters, and Debbie Sessman have been placed in nomination. 
I now open the floor for any other nominations. If there are no other nominations, then I will receive a motion that nominations cease and we proceed to elect these by acclamation. Those then in favor of this motion will say aye. aye. Are there any opposed? I declare then that Gene Monin, David Peters, and Debbie Sessman have been elected by, uh, nominated by your session, but elected by you, the people of this congregation, to serve on your session. And they will serve as the class of 2023. I ask that you uh, be prayerful in light of the decision that has been made today, that you hold these people up, and that you remember also your part in serving the Lord along beside them in the days that are to come. Before we conclude, and I am now going to set uh, a date and a time for <coughs> the uh, ordination of Debbie Sessman, because my understanding is, Debbie, you've never been, uh, where are you, Debbie? She's okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've, you've not, you're not an ordained elder at this time, correct? So we need to uh, ordain Debbie Sessman, and we, on that particular Sunday, will proceed also to install her along with Jean Monin and David Peters. Uh, the date that I am now going to set before you for this particular purpose is December the 27th, 2020, and we will do it again uh, in, at the conclusion of our worship service on that particular Sunday. I declare now that the meeting with the congregation has uh, been concluded, uh, that we are to, at this time, adjourn. Uh, and I'm going to uh, ask uh, that, uh, well, I was going to ask David Bentley, where did he go? He's somewhere walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll close with prayer. And, and, when, and when I'm going to also open our, our worship with prayer as well. Our Father, we again thank you for uh, guiding our thoughts according to your heart, and that's always our prayer, uh, that uh, we will make the right decisions, and when they are in line with your will, uh, we have no reason to, to feel uh, any question about them, or to, to just to know that uh, we have moved as you have led us. Uh, help us always to do that in our lives, not just in the moment, but in our daily walk with you. And we pray now that you will prepare us for the uh, worship service that we have come uh, today to uh, participate with you in. And we come to glorify you, Lord, to give you thanks and to praise your name. Uh, we ask that you would help us, Father, to have hearts that are willing to give you fully that which is from us for you. And uh, we pray that you will give us the ability to praise you and to give you thanks not only in our words, but by the way in which you call us to live our lives as well. But now, Father, we are open before you in this time of worship. Speak to us even as we open our minds and our hearts and our mouths to you in praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. All right, if you would like to stand and join us as we sing this morning for as long as you can, we would love that, so please join us. <laughs> Sun and sunlight flaming from above. 
I call to your attention. I'd like for you to remember with me the family of John Allen Myers, who passed away. This is uh, his wife's name is Karen, by the way, and this is David Peters' uh, brother-in-law. So please remember the Myers family in prayer with me today. Speaking with uh, Kay this morning, uh, she asked us to continue to be in prayer for her at Basel. Basil is still having a lot of problem with fluid building up, and they're going to take some fluid off uh, tomorrow to give him some relief. Uh, but again, this is uh, temporary. There's a, a problem behind this that is still ongoing, and be in prayer as they continue to try to find out what they can do more so for Basil to help alleviate this. And Kay herself is continuing to struggle with uh, back pain. Uh, while they have tried several medications and other procedures, uh, she's had little relief. So please pray for her during this time of her physical suffering and, and also for the doctor she'll be seeing that hopefully uh, he'll be able to discover something more that has yet, than has yet been discovered that will be a help to her. Also remember with me in your prayers those who were elected today to serve on the session as the class of 2023. And again, we always ask your prayers for the session when we meet, and we are meeting following our worship service today. So uh, pray for us as uh, we are meeting to conduct our Lord's business and that we will do so in His Spirit and according to His will. We need to remember all of our brothers and sisters in our congregation in prayer. We have been separated in, in the sense that we haven't been able to come together as a full group for a while now. We're grateful for the means that gives us a chance to connect, uh, but even that, after this length of time, uh, it, it's still our hearts hunger for that, that time we can actually be close and and be able to fellowship together and worship together and study together as we have in times past. So be in prayer for our church family, for all our churches and their, their families included in our time of prayer, both here in, our state, in the States and, and all throughout the world. 
we understand what we are struggling with. We, we know that pretty well. Uh, but their struggles, I'm sure, are as much, and in some places, even quite a bit more than what we are having to endure. So be mindful of this as we, as we go to the Lord in prayer today as well. It's hard to believe that we are coming near the end of another year, but we are. A new year is not far from us. And my prayer is that that new year, not that I want any blessings to be withheld till then, but I'm looking for God to open up doors for us and the ways of we, in which we can serve Him and, and, and we can be witnesses on His behalf. A way in which this church can be a, a, a greater light. And I ask that you commit that to prayer with me, uh, that God will indeed be able to show us things yet uh, that have, been, have not been revealed to us at, to this point. Let us not neglect praying for one another as we look around us. Remember those close to you. They need to be lifted up in your prayers too. Our Father, as we come again before you, we do with grateful hearts, acknowledging your goodness and your grace, and coming to you, Father, at your invitation through Jesus Christ our Lord. We hold before you the needs that we have expressed today in this place, and even now are expressing in our thoughts and our hearts. Recognizing again and all that we need uh, not only the intercession of prayer from one another, but we need the object of our prayer, you our Lord. To receive our prayers as we know you have promised to do and to answer those prayers according to your purpose for your glory and our good is with that hope and that confidence that we share these things with you today. And I join with those who are offering in their in the quietness of their minds and hearts particular needs that have not been mentioned aloud, but I agree with them again in light of their need. Whatever's going on in their life or in the lives of those that, that are connected with them too. I agree with them bringing these before you and trusting you. Father, those in sorrow and in grief need to be comforted. Use us as instruments of your comfort and through your Holy Spirit, bring comfort to their lives. Those that are still struggling, Lord, in sickness, I pray for your healing hand upon them. For those who have grown estranged, Lord, in this time of separation and have somehow in this time also felt separated more and more from you, I pray that you will reach out and put your hand upon them. Let them know that you're there. As far as they may feel they have drifted from you, they are not because while they may be going away, you are following right along with them. Let them know you're there and draw their hearts close to you again. And warm those hearts, Lord. Let them know how much they're loved. We trust you, Father, to answer these prayers. And we open our hearts and our minds. We leave them open. With our amens, we don't close our, ourselves to you, but we leave our, our minds and our hearts open so that you can share with us what you have that we need to hear from you today, including the message which you have laid upon my heart for your people. To you we give the glory and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bible with you today, I'd like you to turn with me to the Psalms. I'm reading out of the 100th chapter today, appropriate psalm for this Thanksgiving Sunday. In fact, I, I found out that the, they had planned to redo this as the reading of the scripture this morning, and it would have been fine with me if they had. It, it's something we need to read over and over again. Uh, it's not a long psalm, it's only five verses, but it's a very powerful five verses. And I, I'm going to share with you what God has laid on my heart this morning, but I encourage you to take the time later this day to go back over this psalm and let God further speak to you. And now there's so much to be revealed to you in this, these words, and I can only begin 
to share uh, a part of that with you today. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That is the reading of God's word. Again, what beautiful, powerful words these are. And I pray that God will reveal to us what we need to hear from him in light of what we have just shared in word today. Dear Lord, I do ask now for your illumination of your spirit and also the strength by which he provides to be upon me and to speak through me for your glory and the good of your people. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to begin with a couple of questions, and uh, I want you to think with me, first of all, in light of this question. If I asked you today to, to count your blessings, what would be the top three? I'm not asking you to make a, a, a long, drawn-out list, but just in your mind, you know, what would be your top three? And as you consider that, another question which element of prayer do you think is harder to practice? Confession or thanksgiving? Confession or thanksgiving? Now, it might seem obvious to us in a sense that confession would be the more difficult of the two, but it's not necessarily so. Both of them can be equally difficult if our heart is not right. You see, a proud heart cannot admit in confession, I did it. But a proud heart cannot acknowledge also in thanksgiving, God did it. And he deserves the praise and the thanks and the glory. For that matter of fact, I believe pride makes adoration and supplication and intercession difficult as well. But a godly heart, which is what God wants us all to have, is a heart that overflows in all of these things. And especially in light of what I'm speaking of today with thanksgiving. A godly heart understands that they, we don't wait for a national holiday. We won't, won't wait for someone to declare it a day of thanksgiving because every day is a day in which we are to give thanks. For we know where our help comes from. We know who provides for us in light of what we need. And he is doing that on a daily basis. And so we offer to him thanksgiving, or should so, on a daily basis. If you look again in this psalm with me this morning, the first four verses are calls to worship. There are actually seven of them mentioned in these uh, first four verses. And uh, there's the word shout that's used in verse 1. That's a call to worship. Shout out to the Lord. In verse 2, there's the word worship in, my, uh, in the uh, NIV, but it might be also rendered probably better as service. As service. And also, or serve. So shout to the Lord, serve the Lord. In verse 2, it says, come to the Lord. Verse 3, it says, no. In verse 4, it says, enter. Again, in verse 4, it says, give thanks. And ultimately, it says, praise the Lord. All of these are invitations or calls, if you will, for us to come before the Lord with grateful hearts and with hearts of praise as well. But it's verse 5 that I call to your attention in, in particular this morning because in verse 5 and all, we are, are told why God is worthy of such grateful praise. Why he's worthy of all of these calls that are being issued here in these first four verses. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. 
His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now, I I want you to note something here in in what I just read to you in this fifth verse. And what the psalmist is actually saying to us. See, I asked you a few moments ago to note your, the three top reasons for you to, uh, 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 and counting your blessings, the three top things that came to mind. The psalmist gives us three things right here. And all that came to his mind as to why God deserves thanks and our praise. And they have nothing to do with that which is physical or material or relational. While we are to be grateful for the things that we have materially, and we are to be grateful, I think, in our hearts and all for our our relationships and for our physical well-being, why we're to be grateful for all these things uh, to the Lord because certainly uh, through Him we are able to enjoy them. The psalmist doesn't look at these things when his heart swells up with adoration and with praise and with thanksgiving. The psalmist exhorts us to give thanks and praise to God for God's sake and not for ours. It's because of who He is. Not just because of what He has done, but because of who He is that He rightfully deserves our thanksgiving because of His nature and His character. So in verse 5, there are three things that I wish to call to your attention. He does it. I, I'm just going to repeat what he says here and also, uh, because it stands out. You see it. But those three things are worthy to be mentioned aloud. The first of which is this. God is good. God is good. And that, my thought, my friends, is not, some, it's not just something trivial when I say God is good. Yeah. That is essential. The fact that God is good is essential to your well-being and to my well-being. And James reminds us in James chapter 1 and in verse 17, he says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God doesn't change, does it? When we say God is good, we can say God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. No matter how you turn it, it doesn't change, does it? And uh, He is constant in that way. He is good. His plans for us are good. His providence is good. His protection is good. His provision for us is good. His patience with me is good. (laughs) His pardon, His pardon, that's good too. All of those things. So Psalm 100 verse 5 is not a statement about so much what God is doing, but by, by the fact of who God is, that's why He does these things. It's not that He has become good because of what He's done. It's because He is good that He does all of this. That's what the psalmist wants us to understand. And it's his goodness that should attract us to him in our times of need, in our times of hurt and pain. In the book of Nahum, in chapter 1 and in verse 7, and all the prophets said this, The Lord is good, and he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. So he's telling us when bad things happen to you, isn't it great to know that you have someone to turn to? You have someone in which to to go to. Others may close their door, but his door always stands open to those who seek him in heart. He's our stronghold in the day of trouble. Now this is not always obvious by sight, but my friends, it's always evident by faith. We know this, not because we can see it at this moment so plainly, but because He's unchanging. And even though the circumstances beg to differ, it's not different. He is still good. Psalm 34 and verse 8 therefore says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes his refuge in Him. 
So I tell you, maybe the rest of the world hasn't been very good to you. (laughs) Maybe right now what's happening in your life has not been very good for you. But there is one who remains good and whose arms are still open to receive you. And he begs you to come. He, he, he calls for you to come to him and let him, let him show you his goodness. Let him become again for you and uh, what he is, desires to be, what he, is, what he exists to be, your protection, your provision, and uh, your, you know, your place of, of physical a physical well-being. God is good. But there's a second thing that that draws the psalmist to the Lord, and he puts this at the top of his list of, of reasons to be thankful, and that is not only is God good, but God is love. He says God is love. He is good. And what does he say about his love? His love endures forever. The English Standard Version calls this, uh, renders this in its interpretation as steadfast love or loyal love. It's unending love. It's a love and all that is extended to you and me based not upon your performance or mine, It's not because we deserve to be loved, but it's based upon His promise. His promise is to love us. To love us. You know, you and I live a life uh, with people around us that we sometimes feel we have to earn the love of those people in our life. And if you, uh, you know, know anything about human nature, and I dare say everybody here does, You know, the the things you might do this moment that seem to earn their love for you, you could cancel out in another moment by doing something that causes them maybe not to love you. I'm not saying that's the case with all your relationships, but that seems to be a a human tendency. You know, the same same person that says, "I, I love you can say, I hate you. But God doesn't say that. He says, I love you, but he doesn't say, I hate you. Listen to this. It comes from Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. You know, if God stopped loving you, you would be consumed. (laughs) You would get what you deserve if he didn't love you. (laughs) You and I would... All get what we deserve if he didn't love us. But it's because he does love us that we are not consumed. That's why we love John 3, 16 so much, isn't it? Because God expressed his love so greatly through his son, Jesus Christ. And there is no greater expression of love than that. I like what it says in Romans chapter 5 and in verse 8. It says, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love to us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait till you were good enough to earn his love. Because you and I, You and I can't be so good as to earn his love. But he loved us even while we were sinners. He saw us in our worst. He sees us, my friends, at our lowest. He knows us. He knows all of the warts. He knows all of the things that we hide from one another. He knows all of those things. They're not hid from him. And yet, he loves us anyway, doesn't he? If you knew everything about me in terms of my background, could you still love me? God does. (laughs) Hey, if we all knew everything about your background, would we be able still to love you? I hope we would, but I know God would. I have no doubt about that. 
In fact, I like what it goes on to say in Romans chapter 8. He reminds us in so many different ways and all that there is nothing that can come between God loving you, His love and you. Nothing can come to separate that love that He has for you. His is an unending love for you. It's a love that is not something that can, can be qualified as far as what we do, but it's a, a fact because of who God is. But there's yet one more thing that I want to call to your attention this morning before I close. In terms of why we should be giving thanks every day, it's because God is good and because God is love. And thirdly, as he says here in this fifth verse, God is faithful. God is faithful. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You know, God is a God of truth. Everything God speaks is true. And God acts only, only and always according to that truth. You can, you can count on that when it comes to the Lord. Now, God... His love is steadfast for us. It never ceases because God remains true. God never reverts from truth to a lie. He tells us what we need to hear. And while He tells us in love, even then, some things that He tells us can be quite painful. It can be quite hard and difficult to hear about myself. But because He loves me, He he makes me see these things, but He doesn't leave me in the mire of those things because He loves me. He reaches out to, to take hold of me and draw me out. He doesn't remind me of my failures, though the devil certainly loves to do that. He doesn't remind me of my failures because those things are already covered in the blood of Christ and already put behind because of the love of God. Every day with Him is a new start, a new day. Every day with Him is a day in which I know my God is going to be there with me. He's going to be there with me. When it says God's faithfulness continues through all generations, let's narrow that down a bit. That means that God is faithful every day, all my life to the next generation and beyond. I like how the writer of Lamentations put, puts it. In chapter 3, I believe it's verses 22 and 23, he says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And his faithfulness is great because it endures all generations. God was faithful to past generations. He's faithful to this generation. And He will be faithful to the next generation and the next one after that. To all generations. So I think to acknowledge His faithfulness, we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful to the Lord for what He has already done in your life for what he's doing even now, and for he, what he desires and will do in your future. Our God's a busy God in the lives of his people. He's a very busy God. You and I may not think about him as much as we should. He may only come to mind in various moments of a given day or week, but not a second passes that his mind is not upon us. He is faithful. He is faithful. You cannot look to your past without realizing if you want to, he's faithful. Right now, whether you want to believe it or accept it, it's still true. He is faithful in light of what he desires to be and do in your life. You can't look to your future, no matter how gloomy you may feel it is at the moment, with this pandemic kind of attitude, he's going to be faithful there as well. 
That's, for, that's the reason for our confidence and for our hope, isn't it? We acknowledge his faithfulness by trusting him. Trusting him with our life. Trusting him to, to help us to know who we are supposed to be and to become such that person. Uh, to be able to, to think with the thought of, thoughts of Christ and to, be, and to be able to act also as Christ would act. So Psalm 105 is a summary, if you will, of the character of God. God is good. God is love. And God is thankful. And we, our God is faithful. Therefore, we are thankful to the Lord in, all of, in light of all of this. But there's a better way to, to see God than just these particular attributes. And that's to see him as he reveals himself most clearly, through the person of his Son, Jesus Christ. For he came to us in the person of Christ. He died on the cross for us through the person of Christ. And he was raised from death, overcoming sin through Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the walking, talking, breathing incarnation of divine goodness and of steadfast love and of eternal faithfulness. In him, we find all these things. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Amen? Let us pray. I don't often write a prayer though I have but I just haven't really used them often from the pulpit more from my own personal meditation but I'm going to use a prayer that was inspired to my heart by 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 through 18 so let us bow our heads in prayer dear Lord teach me to offer you a heart of thanksgiving and praise in all my daily experiences of life. Teach me, Lord, to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all my circumstances. Lord, I accept this as your will for my life. I give thanks and praise to you in this moment, and hopefully in all the moments that I live to serve you the rest of my life in this world. And I know it will be that way in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. For it's in his name I pray. Amen. During this pandemic, we have changed so many things in our order of worship. And one of those things is we, we haven't had a, an invitation. Well, today we are going to have an invitation. Uh, so if you will, at this time, I won't ask you to stand. You can sit where you are. But we're going to... Sing one verse just as, of just as I am, and anyone who feels the need to respond during that time is welcome to come. Braden Zuck has come forward today. Uh, his desire is to uh, make a public profession of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to receive uh, baptism, and also to offer himself for membership in the family of a Rocky Ridge Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Braden, 
I would ask you these questions in light of your desire. Who is your Lord and your Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you trust in Jesus Christ? I do. do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his commands, and to serve him? I washed my hands, Braden, but I just love putting on this plastic glove. I just can't get over it. Braden, if you'll step one step closer to me here, in light of what you have professed and your desire to follow your, the Lord and to serve Him with all your heart, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be good, buddy. <laughs> uh, don't leave me yet I'm not through with you <laughs> you also indicated you would like to become a member of the church family here at Rocky Ridge so I have one other question to ask you do you intend to be a faithful member of the part of Christ's body called the Rocky Ridge Cumberland Presbyterian Church worshiping and serving as a member of this congregation giving of yourself, your time and your substance as God allows you and gives you the opportunity, will you do so? Do. Okay. Braden, it's uh, with a grateful heart as your pastor that uh, I be the first to welcome you. Uh, I welcome your public profession of faith, acknowledging your love and your trust in the Lord, and also I welcome you to this church family and look forward to being able to worship with you and to serve with you uh, in the future as God gives us the opportunity to do so. God bless you, my friend. Uh, normally I'd have him stand here. And this, I guess the pandemic has been your friend. I'd have him come down and hug you and kiss on you and all that. But because of the pandemic, we're going to do our social thing. You may return to your seat, but I hope you'll find a way in which to convey encouragement and appreciation to Braden uh, for the decision he has made and the decisions that he'll be making in the future as God's spirit continues to direct him and he grows in our Lord as a result of his commitment today. You may return to your seat, Ray. Thank you. We will officially put his name, add his name to the role of membership and our regular meeting is a session, but I know that you already welcome him fully as one who is a, a fellow brother with us here in Jesus Christ. We're going to end our worship this morning as we have been doing for the last several months through uh, our offerings. So if you'll stand with me at this time, I guess I can take this off. If you'll stand. <laughs> I never know. I, sometimes I think I just wake up feeling like I'm wearing it. Uh, but um, uh, it just lives with me. But we're going to worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings as we conclude our service. There is an a offering plate on the table out here in the foyer, the narthex, right out here. So if, after, as we close in a few moments with prayer, uh, as you leave, if you'd like to drop your offering in the plate, it, it'll be there waiting for you. I'm going to share with you a scripture. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. May we always offer to the Lord our time, our talent, our treasure, whatever, with that attitude. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to express to you our gratitude, not only uh, in praise and thanksgiving, not only uh, with our gifts as we are about to do here in a moment, but by being able to live a life that gives you glory and honors your name. Dismiss us now in your spirit and all with this in mind and take the offerings in which are offered you today. Bless them, Father, to the upbuilding of this church for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed.